My name is Kyla Aitcock. My husband and I are parents of three boys who are eight, six, and two years old. We live at three Wittree Court, and the proposed high-rise apartment complex will be right behind our house. Because I'm a mom, I'm worried about my precious boys' safety and privacy. I also worry about the other 18 children, the majority of which are 12 and under, who live on our street. I care about my home, but our children are the main reason I stand before you today, opposed to rezoning Track 75. The Planning Commission agreed with us, and we ask you to affirm their decision. Before our home purchase 10 months ago, we checked with a Delta Timber realtor at Chenal Properties and viewed the Chenal Master Plan, which is right here, on the Chenal website, the Chenal Properties website. It's clearly marked as office on here. We were told by the Chenal Properties realtor that this land was zoned for quiet office space. Chenal Properties is part of Delta Timber. Um, only seven months after we bought our property, we learned of Deltic's plan to rezone the same land to add a large, high-density, three-story apartment complex with 130 families living in it and 165 parking spaces, which was conveniently left out of how far this is from our homes uh, by, the, um, by the previous presentation, um, so close behind our house. We never would have bought our home had we known that a three-story apartment complex towering over our house could be built behind us with 130 residents, their visitors and employees having a direct view into our home 24 hours a day, seven days a week through the floor to ceiling windows that are on the back of our house. These same residents, visitors and employees could walk mere feet from their residence through a wooded path at night into our backyard and home. This is certainly not what we bargained for when we bought our home. All of the Wintry Court houses that back up to Track 75 were bought within the last two and a half years since the POD expired, and homeowners relied upon representations from the city and or Deltic in making decisions to purchase our homes. What are zoning laws for if you cannot rely upon them when you purchase your home? Is that what we want the city of Little Rock to be known for? The city should protect its residents from such drastic rezoning so that residents can rely upon zoning laws when making huge decisions like purchasing homes. This weekend, as we have talked about, Mr. Boyinski, or Bozinski from the Planning Commission verified that a very large portion of Track 75, the portion closest to our homes, would revert back to R2 if the expired POD zoning were removed. Most of Track 75 was zoned R2, but was changed to POD zoning, only to accommodate the low intensity and low density use of the planned office development that would look essentially like our homes. And this was the basis of the written agreement for Deltic to get the R2 zoning changed to POD, since they found that, th found that they did not have enough space on the R2 land to build a sufficient amount of homes for them. If this low-density POD does not materialize, then Deltic should not be able to substitute a high-intensity use on Track 75. This is ratcheting of zoning, when somehow the zoning magically goes from SO and R2 and ratchets up to O2 POD, all of those low-intensity and density uses, to ratchet up further to high-density multifamily, or an O2 high-density. We are not asking you to change the law for us or make an exception to the law for us, we are just asking you to follow the zoning laws and not allow abuse and hijacking of the zoning system by Deltic and other landowners through this deceptive ratcheting of zoning. The law is the law, so Deltic should be held to a low intensity use of POD or the zoning should revert back to R2 so they cannot manipulate the system, mislead people, and take advantage of homeowners under cover of underlying zoning laws. Today at 12.19 p.m. I was sent an email, and this is how we know um, that Mr. Bozinski was going to get up here and talk about the supposed underlying O2 that's in, you know, documents that are from 1987 that no um, resident could, could ever know about. Um, so, um, all the city maps that are shown 
that are accessible to the public um, show that the original zoning was R2. So we have never heard about this, you know, 30 years ago uh, zoning that was changed due to a computer error. So my point is, if our city can't get the zoning for Track 75 straight, how can we expect its residents to decipher the zoning laws from 30-year-old papers that they find um, just yesterday or just today? We rely upon the R2 underlying zoning on all city maps, and a potential homeowner, owner, homeowner should be able to rely upon the only information that's available to the public. This apartment complex does not fit in the area because of a high intensity use in the middle of a low intensity area. So surrounding track 75 are single family homes and low density office space. Last Saturday night, at two medical office complexes, the St. Vincent complexes that were shown up there. It looks like it's, you know, a hospital that's in operation 24-7. No, it's not. It's not in operation at nights and on weekends. And it's the same for every office space around there. That is the time when people are walking across the street to the Poland Park. That's when we are home from work, home from school. And that I noticed that in the traffic study, the night hours, again, even though we pointed this out at the Planning Commission, were conveniently left out because the number would be zero for office space. <coughs> zero, or close to zero, it's negligible. But for a live-in facility, there are going to be cars at the times that kids are walking across the street and going to the pool. And when I went to St. Vincent, way I took pictures and I think Jennifer had showed them. Um, there were no cars there on Saturday night at 8 p.m. No cars, no activity. Bank of the Ozarks, no cars, no activity. No lighting. If you look at the apartment complex, the condos, they're next to Bank of the Ozarks down the street on Chanel Parkway, lit up like a Christmas tree at night. Activity at all hours. So just that's the contrast between what we're looking at here. So speaking of neighborhood streets, we're talking about a rolling road development. Um, you know, I've heard that before. This is actually not a rolling road development. It is at the corner of Rowling and Champignol, but Champignol Drive is a neighborhood street that's one lane. One lane each way. And it has a park and pool right across the street. This is just a danger waiting to happen. The entrance and exit are right across from the pool. I, I don't know if I said that. Um, and a lot of people walk and they bike around Champignol Drive. This is, you know, all of the neighborhoods around this area. Single family homes all the way back. And there, there's a ton of walking and biking traffic. Multifamily zoning is not a good transitional use of Track 75. Um, the property was discussed that's near Bascom Place by the pool and the park. If you um, notice, um, Dr. Bolin had passed out where the C1 had a lot of uses scratched out of it. So it's actually, if you look at it, they're all the 24-7 uses, all the high intensity uses have been taken out in the minutes of the Planning Commission, which Delta submitted, including a multifamily use and all of these high intensity uses. So are you telling me that we're going to put a high density, high intensity, 130 family uh, apartment complex <coughs> on our small tract of land, but yet the, it's going to be higher intensity and density and not transitional to the C1 that's right across the street. There are no high intensity or high density uses in the area. So that is not a good transitional use of this, of this tract of land. There are many, this facility does not have to be forced onto this small piece of land because there are many other Chanel properties where this could be built, which would not require any rezoning whatsoever. There are at least six senior living facilities that have availability right now. There are at least two other senior living facilities already approved by the Planning Commission, including 
a resort-style senior living complex on Chennault Parkway, just three miles away from Track 75. And this resort-style senior living <coughs> complex has 200 plus units. It's bigger than this one. There are many locations along Chennault Parkway which are zoned for, could easily be rezoned for multifamily, which would be much more suitable for high-density buildings such as this. In fact, the Planning Commission asked the developer here to do just that. They asked them to find a more suitable location along Chennault Parkway, but Delta insists upon forcing this facility onto property on which it does not fit, a square peg into a round hole. The developers stated many times during our meeting with them that they may not even purchase Track 75. We did meet with them, and they said numerous times, we haven't even decided whether we're going to buy this property. I don't understand why they would waste the city's time and further confuse the zoning issue for Track 75 if they haven't even decided whether they're going to buy the property. If Track 75 is rezoned and the developer does not purchase the property, many multifamily complexes that might not be as luxurious as this could be built there. Man, do we have other speakers? What are the speakers? Excuse me, I'm sorry you're being interrupted. Yes, we do. I've only got, I'm almost done. If, uh, One more speaker. After me. I've got two more speakers. Okay, thank two you. More. If you would try to close, I think we've heard many of these same arguments from other speakers. Okay. Um, so Delta did not inform the public about the possibility of a zoning change by failing to provide a sign on Track 75 as required by the city. We found that we were the first to inform most residents in the area um, of this proposed zoning change. We spent much time talking to people and getting the petition signatures that I handed out. And if you look at the online petition that's in there, I believe it's at the end, it has a lot of reasons that people put why they were opposed to this. So that might be worth your review. We could never compete with a big corporation like Delta Timber, and that is why we are counting on you, our city directors, to protect us citizens <coughs> from uh, and stop this rezoning attempt. We plead with you to protect our neighborhood and not allow use of deceptive ratcheting of zoning to scheme the system. The Planning Commission listened to us citizens and voted no to the rezoning. We ask that you do the same. We also ask that you remove the O2 POD zoning that has expired and restore the zoning of Track 75 to include R2. Thank you for your time and service to our city. Uh, thank you, Ms. Acott.